Nuclear energy, uh, seeing renewed interest fueling demand for the uranium that's behind all the reactors. This starts deep underground, not with noise, but with silence. Beneath layers of stone and pressure lies a metal that holds the power to light entire cities or level them. Uranium, you've heard the name. But the journey it takes from rock to reactor is one of the most secretive and complex industrial processes on Earth. It isn't just mined, it's transformed through fire, acid, spinning metal, and time. And what comes out isn't just fuel, it's a force, one that must be controlled with absolute precision, because once it begins, there's no turning back. Let's find out how it all begins. Mining uranium, hundreds of meters beneath the surface, where daylight never reaches, machines dig for a rock that quietly changed the course of history. Uranium isn't rare, but finding it in high concentrations is. In northern Canada, near the forests of Saskatchewan, some of the richest uranium deposits in the world sit locked beneath ancient sandstone. But getting to them isn't as simple as digging down. Before a single gram of ore is touched, the ground around it must be frozen. Pipes are sunk deep into the earth and filled with chilled brine, cold enough to turn underground water into solid ice. This frozen shell prevents flooding and keeps the structure stable. It's not just safety, it's survival. Drilling teams operate from a distance, guiding machines with robotic precision. Each drill bit must move slowly, layer by layer, to avoid triggering collapses. Pilot holes are made first, mapping the way. Then, larger drills follow, widening the route to the uranium-bearing rock. When the ore is finally reached, it's not explosive or glowing. It looks ordinary, gray, dense, and unremarkable. But scanners detect the truth. Uranium concentrations here are unusually high, sometimes 15% or more. That's enough to power entire cities. What happens next is just as careful, because now the rock must be broken down, and every piece matters. Crushing and transport. Once brought to the surface, the raw uranium ore begins its transformation. But first, it has to be broken. Large hydraulic hammers shatter the solid rock into chunks small enough to be processed, but strong enough to keep dust, a serious radiation risk, under control. The air is constantly filtered. The equipment is shielded. Every movement is monitored. The fractured ore moves to a mill where it's ground even finer, almost to the consistency of sand. This isn't about aesthetics, it's about access. The smaller the particles, the easier it becomes to extract the uranium locked inside. Water is added to the fine powder, forming a slurry thick with potential. It's pumped into sealed containers, each one built to handle the material's weight and radioactivity. From there, it begins a long journey by truck, often through remote wilderness, to a dedicated refining facility. At the refinery, the containers are placed beneath vacuum tubes that extract the slurry without exposing it to the air. Nothing is left to chance. The vehicles are scanned for contamination before leaving. The goal is simple. Get the uranium without letting it get out. What arrives at the mill isn't fuel yet. It's a chemical soup. A dense, acidic mix of water, crushed stone, and uranium. And now it's ready for the next step. Separation. Not from the rock, but from itself. Chemical extraction. The slurry enters tall metal tanks where it meets its first true test, acid. Strong enough to dissolve metal, the acid eats away at the crushed rock, pulling uranium into solution while leaving behind the unwanted minerals. These impurities settle at the bottom, forming a dense sludge. The liquid above, now laced with uranium, flows forward. But the uranium isn't pure yet. What's in the liquid is a mix of chemical forms, Technicians initiate a series of reactions, carefully introducing agents that pull the uranium out of the solution and isolate it from everything else. Each step is measured, adjusted, and verified. Even a slight variation could ruin the batch or create dangerous byproducts. Once purified, the uranium is heated in massive furnaces to around 850 degrees Celsius. 
This heat transforms the compound into a gas, a rare trait among metals. And this gas, uranium hexafluoride, is the key to enrichment. Not because it's radioactive, but because it can be spun. The entire purpose of this transformation is to prepare for one specific goal, separating the rare uranium-235 isotope from the more common uranium-238. It's the U-235 that sustains a chain reaction, and it only makes up about 0.7% of natural uranium. That's not enough. To get more of it, the gas must be spun at impossible speeds. But before we reach the centrifuges, we need to understand one thing. The atoms look identical. They behave the same. They even weigh nearly the same. But one of them can change the world. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Isotope enrichment. Uranium hexafluoride gas flows into long, silvery tubes. Centrifuges designed to do one thing, separate atoms that differ by less than 1% in mass. Each centrifuge spins at dizzying speeds, nearly 1,500 revolutions per second. Inside, heavier uranium-238 atoms drift outward, while the slightly lighter uranium-235 collects closer to the center. It's not a one-time process. The gas moves from one centrifuge to the next in long cascades, dozens, even hundreds, all working together. With each pass, the concentration of uranium-235 increases just a little. It can take thousands of stages to reach usable levels, but eventually, enriched uranium emerges. What's collected isn't gas anymore. As it cools, it condenses into a fine black powder. It doesn't look special. You might mistake it for soot or coal dust. But this powder is potent, enriched, precise, and tightly controlled. The powder is packed into thick, sealed steel drums and shipped to fuel fabrication plants. Every gram is tracked. Every container is checked. There's no margin for error. Enrichment doesn't make uranium explosive. It makes it viable, capable of producing the chain reactions that drive reactors. But enriched uranium can't simply be poured into a machine. It must be shaped, stabilized, and prepared to withstand the immense heat and pressure of a nuclear core. That transformation comes next. Fuel assembly. At the fuel plant, the black enriched powder is ready for its next metamorphosis. But first, it must change color. Chemists convert it into uranium dioxide, a dense ceramic powder with a dark gray tone. It's this form that can be safely pressed into fuel pellets, small cylinders no larger than a fingertip, Using thousands of pounds of pressure, hydraulic presses shape the powder into uniform pellets. Each one is compact, smooth, and deceptively ordinary. But what it contains is anything but. A single pellet holds the same energy as hundreds of kilograms of coal or barrels of oil. Next, the pellets pass through a furnace that burns at nearly 1,700 degrees C. For 24 hours, they're baked to remove internal pores and increase density. What emerges are hardened fuel units, ready to face the harsh conditions inside a nuclear core. Now comes the assembly. Zirconium alloy tubes, chosen for their strength and transparency to neutrons, are lined up by robotic arms. One by one, each tube is filled with a column of uranium dioxide pellets. Once filled, the ends are welded shut by automated machines. A bundle of these sealed tubes is then grouped into what's called a fuel assembly. These assemblies are carefully measured, scanned, and weighed to confirm everything is exactly as it should be. From powdered metal to a nuclear building block, each step in the fuel's creation is driven by control. Because once these rods enter the reactor, there's no pausing the process. The system has to work, every time, without fail, inside the reactor. Fuel assemblies are loaded onto specialized transports and sent to nuclear power plants where the final transformation begins. Here, deep inside a reinforced core lined with concrete meters thick, the uranium will do what it was prepared for all along, split. Technicians carefully guide each assembly into its exact position inside the reactor. Hundreds of tubes filled with uranium dioxide pellets are arranged to form a dense network. 
When everything is in place, thousands of rods held close together, the core is sealed. But the real reaction doesn't start until the control rods are withdrawn. These rods made of neutron-absorbing material keep the uranium quiet. Once removed, neutrons fly freely between fuel rods, smashing into uranium-235 atoms. With each impact, the atoms split. Each split releases heat and more neutrons, triggering a chain reaction. It's this chain reaction that generates extraordinary heat, heat that turns water into high-pressure steam. The steam spins massive turbines, which in turn drive electrical generators. From quiet metal pellets comes electricity powerful enough to light entire cities. The process is monitored around the clock. If anything changes, pressure, temperature, or speed, automatic systems react instantly. There's no room for error, no delay. Safety isn't optional. It's engineered into every part. After about a year, the fuel rods are spent. They're still hot, still radioactive, and far from harmless. They're lifted from the core and placed in deep pools of water, silent glowing vaults where time and temperature will bring them slowly back to stability. But even then, the story isn't over. The glow of uranium fades but never truly disappears. Even after the turbines stop turning and the rods are removed from the core, its energy lingers, contained but never forgotten. It's stored in pools, sealed in metal, watched by sensors and people alike. Because what we've created isn't just a fuel source, it's a long-term commitment. The journey that starts deep beneath the earth in frozen stone and chemical reactions ends in quiet rooms powered by precision and caution. Every switch we flip, every light that comes on, is part of a system built on control. Nuclear energy is not just about power. It's about boundaries, responsibility, and the reality of what happens when humans gain the ability to break matter itself. We split the atom and unlocked a force that doesn't sleep. What we do with it now, and how we choose to manage it, is a choice we carry into every future.